our firefighters did an amazing job last night and today. Not only the firefighters from the Los Angeles City Fire Department, but as well all the firefighters from Los Angeles County Fire Department, Cal Fire, Angeles National Forest. I saw burns that came up to the backyard of hundreds if not thousands of homes. That took a lot of effort. And to not have any serious firefighter injuries is amazing. The second takeaway was that uh, we still have active fire in the wildland. We still have active fire in the wildland. The wind, as you can feel, is still strong. So the fire in the wildland is, is primarily driven by the wind as well as by topography. In the flatlands is primarily the wind. In impression number three was that an ember, it only takes one ember, can start another fire. And as I stated this morning, embers at this fire have traveled downwind over a mile. That is why we're being very, very cautious in allowing repopulation. We want to be absolutely sure that the fire is completely out. So you should be very proud of all the firefighters on scene and police officers on scene today. In terms of structures destroyed, the mayor stated 25, and I just got a correction as we walked up here. The total is 31 structures. 13 structures have a 100% loss. Three have a 50% loss. Four have a 25% loss. And 11 have a 10% loss. We put out teams of inspectors to do property damage. They spent all day doing that. That's how we were able to get the numbers for you today at five o'clock. In terms of cause, we are aware of a story out there in the media of a witness seeing fire fall from a transmission tower. Our arson investigators have interviewed, we believe that witness, but certainly someone else who said something similar. So we are following all leads and we still don't have a determination, but we are aware of that story out in the media. And lastly, I would just encourage the public to continue to do what you've been doing for the last day and a half and will do for another day or so. Be patient with us. I know you want to get back into your homes. We want to get you back into your homes, but we want to make sure you're safe. That concludes my remarks. I'd like to introduce Chief from the LA County Fire Department, Dave Richardson. Thank you, Chief, and good evening. David Richardson, Chief Deputy of Emergency Operations for the County of Los Angeles. In this effort to battle this disastrous fire, uh, LA County has committed in excess of 400 firefighters to a number of fire engines and air resources to assist along in the battle of this fire. As Chief Tarasas mentioned, and the mayor mentioned, as far as percentages of containment, there's still quite a bit of work and effort that continues to get a line around this fire. I'd like to note and echo the sentiment, the fact that our men and women of public safety are out there making a difference in the community in providing life safety and protecting property as we continue to the next few days and potentially week to get a line around this and uh, it, to a point where we feel good that we can put it in patrol mode down the road here. The other thing I'd like to note quickly is the fact that this is a true unified effort of not only fire service, law enforcement, public safety, again, and making that difference. And this is a true model from Southern California here in Los Angeles County, the city of Los Angeles, really an effort to make that difference and a true model for to have through across the country as we continue to make a positive impact. So with that, we'll continue that effort. A lot of good work will continue through the evening with the wind continues to blow. 
and we're hopeful we'll continue to increase the containment lines. With that, I'd like to call up Los Angeles Police Department Chief Moore. Thank you. Chief Richmond, thank you very much. And as a matter of an update, I'm prepared to provide a state a status report as to where the department is now, what our missions are, and what we see going on over the next 12-hour period. Uh, first, uh, as has been said, we're in a, we're in a unified command uh, in support of this fire and, and uh, achieving its uh, extinguishing as well as protecting the lives of, of everyone in which it's impacted. Uh, secondly, the impact of this fire requiring the personnel resources that have been aside has resulted in the department ha being on a citywide tactical alert. Uh, we have sufficient resources around the entire city. However, we have en uh, en embarked on a tactical alert in order to control and, and, and save those resources for our most critical instances. So with that, the consequence is that citizens and community members in other parts of the city may see a degradation on low-level calls for service. We ask for your patience. We have nearly 400 personnel here today, and we'll have over 450 personnel here overnight. And so this is a balancing act of all the competing needs for public safety here in Los Angeles. Our responsibilities here include, as has been said, this, the evacuation of, of neighborhoods as well as securing those closed areas and providing for traffic control and allowing uh, and ensuring that the uh, fire and other resources can get in and out of these areas. Uh, the closed areas as they are today, uh, as of this moment, we've made an adjustment given in consultation with the fire department and we are opening all closed areas south of the 118 freeway. So uh, communities that were previously closed south of the 118 freeway, uh, west of DeSoto Avenue, are now allowed back into those areas. What we ask for everyone who goes back into the, their residences, back in their, in their homes and communities, if they see something that is questionable or uncertain, or they see something that, they're, that, that, that brings concern to them, call the, the police department. We will respond and we'll accompany you back into your residence to ensure that you're safe and that you're able to repopulate this community uh, uh, quickly and, and effectively. Uh, secondly, recognizing that the, the remaining closed areas, it's projected at a minimum, will remain closed overnight and into tomorrow. Uh, in an effort to support uh, many people who have been evacuated from those areas, we're establishing three centers that will be staffed by police officers as well as volunteers from the mayor's crisis response team where residents with proper ID will be able to arrive and will accompany you back to your home for a five minute uh, effort to collect essential medicines, uh, any, any uh, a change of clothing, check on your pets, an, an initial gathering of, of any other things that you may have left in your haste to leave that area. Again, these areas will remain closed overnight and into tomorrow, and recognizing that a number of people may not have anticipated such a, a, a duration, we will support you, but you will not be allowed to remain in these closed areas. Secondly, I cannot assure you that every resident in every part of the closed area will have access. There are still, as the fire chief indicated, hot spots and areas that are too dangerous even for uh, emergency personnel to be there and certainly to, to bring you as a, as a resident into those areas. So this is a case-by-case -case basis, but I would encourage that if individuals have an interest in returning their residents and picking up some essential items, that they go to these three locations. Uh, Councilman uh, Lee and, and Councilwoman uh, Rodriguez will provide those specific locations here in a moment. Uh, in closing, overnight, if you are a resident from these closed areas, rest assured that with 450 uh, uniform personnel that we will be in each of these neighborhoods. We will be providing security and doing everything possible to ensure the safety of your, your residents as the fire department uh, strives to extinguish this blaze and the threat it poses to your house or home. In that, though, circumstances of looters or others, uh, if they choose to go in those areas, let me be clear, uh, there'll be no tolerance for any type of, of an individual trying to make an opportunity to go there and, and seize this moment. We'll be aggressive in, in arresting and prosecution of those individuals. Lastly, I'm well aware that a number of our residents have security systems and other tools that are safeguarding their home. Should they get reports, of, of activity in their home that, that is suspicious, 
please call 911, report that information. Again, we will have sufficient resources nearby and assigned to these areas to ensure that, that, they, that the safety of these, res, of these residences remain. Uh, lastly, uh, la and this is truly an, an effort that the men and women of LAPD and LA Fire and all LA County Sheriff and every agency in public safety has been on these lines for nearly approaching 24 hours. If you have an opportunity to see an officer, firefighter, uh, a thank you, a smile, an appreciation goes a long way in encouraging their heart. They're out there for all of us, and their efforts and their dedications in their efforts are making a difference. Thank you. And now at this point, I'll introduce Council Councilwoman Rodriguez. Thank you, Chief, and thank you so much to this uh, incredible unified command, which has been so effectively serving uh, the residents of Los Angeles during this uh, critical time. Uh, we do want to report some of the updated shelter facilities and what's available for uh, individuals that have been forced to mandatory evacuate their areas. We want to provide the updated information. At this time, Silmar Recreation Center is still remain full. It is uh, completely full. We have uh, Mason Recreation Center and Council Member uh, John Lee's district also is full and at capacity. The availability of additional locations includes Granada Hills Recreation Center, Northridge Recreation Center, Lenark, Balboa Sports Complex, Branford, and Van Nuys Sherman Oaks. Those locations still remain available for individuals to seek shelter and evacuate heeding the calls of those mandatory evacuations. I want to thank Chief Moore and the members of the Mayor's Crisis Response Team for availing themselves to help many of these families that have been affected by these mandatory evacuations to allow them the opportunity with escort to go back to their residences for a brief moment to collect some of the items, given that we recognize they couldn't have anticipated the length of time that they would have to be uh, away from their residence. So at this time, we are offering this opportunity for residents affected by this evacuation in Silmar uh, of the uh, Oak Ridge Mobile Home Park. They can be uh, escorted from the Silmar Recreation Center. There they will have their IDs checked and will have an available escort uh, afforded to them. In addition to that, we want to make sure that we remind everybody that uh, at these shelter and evacuation centers that are provided by our Department of Recreation and Parks, small animals are available to also accompany you, your pets, your cats, your dogs, um, and larger animals for, again, those members uh, that could find themselves in a circumstance that require large animal or equine evacuations. We still have facilities available uh, to accommodate your needs at the Hanson Dam Equestrian Center, uh, also at Pierce College. So we do have those facilities still remain available for your use, and uh, we encourage that. And again, uh, thank you all for your cooperation. It has helped. Uh, uh, it has helped us address these emergencies with far greater ease, uh, given the complications of the wind. And we just appreciate and ask for the public's continued support. Thank you. Councilmember John Lee. Oh, sorry, John. Councilmember John Lee, uh, Council District 12. Uh, earlier, uh, Chief Moore uh, talked about uh, repopulating Chatsworth. So out, of a, out of an abundance of caution, we evacuated a small portion north of Chatsworth, right below the 118 freeway. And uh, starting right now, you're going to be able to go back into your homes. But in the areas north of the 118 in Porter Ranch, uh, we're going to have, and uh, in Granada Hills, we're going to have two locations available for residents to go to to meet with police officers and have an escort. Number one, please have your IDs with you to show that you do live in these areas. And those two locations are the Porter Ranch Shopping Center and the Target Shopping Center at Balboa, um, Bal uh, Bal Bal Balboa and San Fernando, San Fernando, Michigan. And so if you bring your ID, you will get receive a police escort to make a brief stop into your house, again, to bring those necessary items that you may have forgotten or a change of clothes. Um, one thing I, I do want to do is, uh, you know, not only thank the men and women who have 
uh, fought all night to battle this fire. But I also want to thank the residents of Council District 7 and Council District 12, because when the call went out to uh, evacuate our areas, uh, th there was such an amazing response to it that really allowed our firefighters to focus on the fire and not so much on rescuing the people who decided to stay. And so thank you very much. You made their jobs so much easier. And, uh, you know, again, those two places you can go to, you know, stop and, and uh, revisit your homes. Uh, just for a brief moment, I'd like to throw it back to the, our mayor. So, so uh, we have a few other uh, folks just to give a few more pieces of information. This is really, I, I want to thank everybody again. We won't be able to hear from everybody who's here, but I want to thank the school district. Scott Schmerlson is here of the board, Kelly Gomez as well. I want to thank also the LA County uh, Supervisor, Catherine Barger, who's been amazing, uh, and the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department as well. Um, we have our state representatives who have done a superb job in making sure that there's state assistance, as I mentioned. We've been in close touch with the governor, uh, but we're very lucky to have both Senator Henry Stern and Senator Member Jesse Gabriel to say a couple words and to give some information about the state, uh, uh, state of emergency as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, state Senator Henry Stern representing the Porter Ranch area in the West San Fernando Valley. Uh, as of 5.01 p.m., the governor has issued an emergency declaration for both Los Angeles and Riverside County areas impacted by the numerous fires underway today. Um, that goes in addition to the federal management assistance grants that the governor was able to obtain from FEMA earlier this morning. So we just want to all the brave first responders and all of our tireless public servants down here at city and county levels to know that the state has got your back and that you know, fires don't respect politics. So we got to be above that in this moment. I think we're showing that. So thank you to the governor for stepping up unhesitatingly. Um, and uh, we'll be there when you need us. Good evening, everybody. Uh, Jesse Gabriel represent the West San Fernando Valley and the state legislature was up in Sacramento this morning with our governor, Gavin Newsom. Uh, I can assure you he is following the situation very, very closely, getting regular updates and briefings from the Office of Emergency Services. And I just want to thank the governor for his support. As the senator mentioned, he has uh, issued a, uh, a declaration of emergency that has been received by the county of Los Angeles. And he has been in contact with the White House, talking to folks in Washington, D.C. And we are working hard at the state level to ensure that there are state and federal resources to support the incredible work of the folks down here on the ground, the incredible first responders from the uh, city and the county who have been doing great work in addition to, uh, to CAL FIRE and the CHP. So just wanted to uh, extend our thanks to uh, the firefighters, the police officers, everyone in uniform, assure you that the state of California is here to support those efforts. And again, thank our Governor Gavin Newsom for his work. And uh, it's now my pleasure to introduce, uh, throw uh, uh, to our Congressman, uh, Brad Sherman, who's also been doing great work. Hello, I'm Brad Sherman, and for 23 years I've represented the West San Fernando Valley in Congress. October has not been a good month over the years for the Northwest San Fernando Valley. Eleven years ago in October, we had the Cessnon fire in much of the same area. Four years ago, we had the Aliso Canyon natural gas blowout, and now we have the Saddle Ridge fire. Uh, I want to thank FEMA for authorizing uh, federal uh, fire management grants to pay 75 percent we expect of the uh, costs of putting out this fire and uh, I was our neighborhood was evacuated a little after midnight last night so to my uh, federal uh, uh, fe my, my uh, fellow uh, evacuees first we want to say thank, thank you, you to the firefighters who are saving our homes and protecting lives and uh, then one practical bit of information that is uh, save your receipts for food and for lodging if you've been uh, required to evacuate. Many homeowners insurance policies uh, will cover it. And uh, I know that my colleagues, Tony Cardenas and uh, Katie Hill and I will be seeking a declaration of a federal disaster area in order to, so the federal government will provide aid to the victims of this fire. Thank you. Thank you very much, Congressman. Thank you for that great leadership at the federal level. Finally, uh, for information, I know a lot of people want to get home. There's a lot of question about what freeways will be open not. I want to thank the California Highway Patrol who's been doing great work. Captain Dennis Ford is here to update you on the openings on the five southbound and some uh, projections hopefully for what we can do. But a lot of this will follow, follow the fire. He'll be a final speaker. I'll say a couple words in Spanish and then we'll open up for questions. Captain. 
Captain Dennis Ford with the California Highway Patrol and hopefully some welcome information for some people trying to get home. Uh, with the full approval of the command staff for uh, the Saddleback Fire, California Highway Patrol and Caltrans are going to be lifting all closures on Interstate 5. We're also going to be lifting all closures on uh, Interstate 405. The only remaining closure that is going to remain in effect is going to be on the 210 freeway between I-5 and the 118. Uh, State Route 14 will be opened, but the slow lane of State Route 14 northbound will remain closed so the firefighters can keep doing some work that they've been doing on the right shoulder there. And um, if there's any questions, we can do a sidebar afterwards. Thank you. We can take them in just a moment. También en español yo quiero decir unas palabras. Buenas tardes a todos por estar aquí con nosotros. El incendio de Saddle Ridge se ha extendido de manera significativa desde anoche. Ahora es más o menos 8,000 acres. Y hace unos momentos yo firmé una declaración del estado de emergencia por la ciudad de Los Ángeles y el condado ha recibido esta declaración. Y también el gobernador Newsom ha declarado también una emergencia. Gracias a nuestros líderes estatales, al senador Stern y también al asambleísta Gabriel y gobernador Newsom. Quisiera agradecer a los valientes hombres y mujeres que están trabajando muy duro durante la noche y hoy para proteger a las vidas y los hogares de todos y estos vecinos, nuestros vecinos y nuestros hogares. Actualmente, los órdenes de evacuación ahora afectan a más de originalmente uh, 100, 100 mil personas, pero ahora hay nuevos números, es 70 uh, mil residentes. En inglés, updated numbers on those evacuees are 70,000 estimated for about 16,000 residents, which we extrapolate is about 70,000 people, nearly 2% of the population of the city. Uh, si usted está en una zona de evacuación, por favor, cumpla con la orden y váyase. Tenemos una cantidad de nuevos centros de evacuación abiertos. Usted puede ver una lista completa en la página emergency.lacity.org. Estamos aquí para ustedes a proteger sus familias, sus hogares y su, uh, su ciudad también. Y gracias, tenemos más de 300 oficiales del Departamento de Policía para proteger uh, estas áreas. Y también el orden de evacuación al sur uh, del freeway de uh, 118 ahora no está en efecto. En efecto, uh, las personas que viven allí pueden regresar a sus hogares. Y los residentes de Port Ranch, con la asistencia de los oficiales del Departamento de Policía, pueden visitar a sus hogares para cinco minutos con su identificación. Uh, gracias a los concejales, concejal uh, Mónica Rodríguez y Juan Lee por su liderazgo también. And with that, we'll be happy to answer any questions. I don't know if we wanted to stay for the questions or not. Okay, well, just to, we're going to quickly recap uh, what happened during this almost 30-minute news conference here at the Hanson Dam, where this uh, command post has been set up for our city leaders to give us an update on the Saddle Ridge fire. Uh, the latest information is that 31 homes have burned.